our top five. We each made our own list. Okay, these are teams that we think have the best chance to break their national championship drought or to just win their first national championship. Oregon, believe it or not, unless I am totally wrong and so is Google, the internet, and AI, Oregon has never been recognized as winning a national championship in college football. I've watched them lose multiple ones. Mm -hmm. I mean, we talk about Ohio State, you talk about Auburn with the Michael Dyer, was he down, was he not? We all know he wasn't. But I've got Oregon number one because of Dan Landing and what they're building. And I would not be shocked if Oregon found a way to win it this year. Even though Ohio State's roster's loaded, Georgia's roster's loaded, I think Oregon has a top three to five roster in the sport. And all it takes is four quarters of lining up and kicking your ass one time to win it. Tennessee. So we do have to tell people that we capped this At for this century. Yes. So I mean, like this is this is just like if a, if your team won a championship this century, they're they're not eligible to yes. make our list right now. So, so from that's 2000, Oklahoma, Miami, Buckeyes, LSU, Southern Cal, Texas, Florida, oh. obviously Bama and Auburn. Florida State's won one this this century. Clemson, Michigan, Georgia, none of those teams can be on here. Yes. So. Oregon, had never been recognized as one. I got them the number one most likely to break their national championship drought first and win one this century, and really in any century if you're looking at their history. Tennessee, last national championship, uh, was in the late 90s, 98, I believe it was. I've got them number two with what Josh Heupel's doing, even though they're in the SEC. Penn State, 1987 was their last national championship. I know people will laugh, you can't get out of the Big 10. Well, now with the 12-team playoff, you get hot at the right time, we'll see. Then Utah at four, right? And when you look at what Kyle Whittingham has built, I think the physicality can work. Now, will they win it this year? I don't know, I don't think so, but with Cam Rising coming back with the way he's built that, nothing would shock me at Utah. I think Whittingham's gonna get him one before it's said and done. And then number five, David, Ole Miss Rebels. Haven't won one since 1960, technically, where they split with Minnesota. Uh, I think Lane Kiffin eventually, I think he's going to stay at Ole Miss. I think they get one. I really believe he has a chance to get one. Now, that's fifth on my list. So that I got them as the fifth most likely to break it. Oregon one, Tennessee two, Penn State three, Utah four, Ole Miss five. Mm, all right. It's not bad. Blaine, let's see where your list is wrong. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're up next? Okay, there's Here mine. All right, well, I'm going to go with Oregon with you as well. I don't know how you don't have them as number one with what Dan Lanning's do. If they're just from a roster standpoint, Tennessee, too. One, because I believe in what Josh Heupel is doing as a coach, but it's not just a high-tempo offense, all the flash. Yeah. Tennessee is pretty damn good at running the ball and stopping the run. And if you can add that with Nico, a quarterback, that is a dangerous recipe for one year, maybe blowing the top off and getting you one home. You got to go with Lane Kiffin. I mean, the quarterback will always be answered. The offense will always be answered. What's been holding Lane Kiffin back his whole career? Defense. And that's defense. And Ole Miss's defense this year looks like they might be up to the task and win some games. Penn State, the talent level is always there. They always got a tackle or a DN is going to the top 10 pick. I think right now what's been holding Penn State, I think their roster has been good enough just to quarterback play. I don't think Drew Aller is good enough. We're going to have to find um, out with Drew Aller. We'll yeah. see. But then I do think Notre Dame, mm. I think Freeman will get him one. They always have athletes. They're always in the top 15 when it comes to recruiting. Um, Riley Leonard is going to answer some questions. We'll see how long he is there. But I just think from a talent standpoint and a personnel standpoint, Notre Dame can have a one-off year to where they can maybe – maybe win a national championship. Mm -hmm. David, what do you got? I like it. All right, bring up my list. I wrote down four criteria for my list in terms of the, the team most likely to break their national ch championship drought. And that criteria is access to top recruits, brand recognition, ability and desire to fund the football program. Yep. Not just the money, but that's the most important thing to you. That's where you want the money to go for your athletic program. And then the current state of the program too. So my list, I'll read five to one. Number five, Penn State, who y'all mentioned. Four, Texas A&M. Three, Oregon. Two, Notre Dame. And one Tennessee. I mean, when you talk about like access to top recruits, Tennessee right here in the South, a state away from Georgia, a state away from Alabama can go get some of these big, especially in the trenches, these defensive linemen. I think Texas A&M, the same thing, just the state of Texas. There's more competition for those recruits, mm -hmm. but Texas high school football, incredible. Also, Marcus Freeman, what he's doing at Notre Dame. Again, I don't know if the coaches at these places right now are the guys who will ultimately win the national championship for the for their teams, but all the state of the program for all of these is in a great spot right now. When you look at brand recognition, these are these 
these are blue blood programs. I mean, even Texas A&M, who hasn't won a national championship in so long, recruits still know these places as, as schools that they can go and win a national championship. Talk about ability and the desire to fund the football program. I'm looking at Texas A&M and Oregon specifically. Like yeah. all the money in the world you could possibly want. And like I said, the current state of all these programs are in a good spot. You know, I looked at Nebraska. Washington obviously got very close last year, but Kalen DeBoer now leaves. I and mean, there's a lot of programs that haven't that that still have all the brand recognition and the money, and they do have access to top recruits, um, but they're just in that you know uh, six through ten range yeah. to me. Which Texas A&M hasn't won one since 1939. Washington, as you mentioned, hasn't won one since 1991. And another team, Iowa, right? We make fun of their offense; it's ugly. This, that, and the other. They got a new OC in there. We'll see. They Missouri. haven't won one since 1954. Missouri, Missouri as well. So there's some other teams. Yeah. What, what makes you put Oregon at three uh, instead of being higher? Yeah. Again, I think like Tennessee has access to better recruits than Oregon does. We talked about this just yesterday when we said, hey, how is USC coming all the way to the deep south in Georgia where Kirby Smart has access to all of these big defensive linemen and plucking them away? When I was growing up, USC was a much bigger blue blood college football brand than Oregon, and even they can't keep yeah. Top recruits right now with Lincoln Riley as their coach. I think Dan Lanning understands that. That's why they're so even so high on my list, and he's trying to go get the best recruits that he can. Obviously, they have the money. In the NIL era, maybe that changes. Mm -hmm. Maybe Oregon can just go around the country and just say, we want to offer the most money and get kids from the Deep South to come up there. But I think that Tennessee has better access to that right now, and even still Notre Dame because of just how the brand recognition See, is that's so the strong. one, that's the, with Notre Dame and Ole Miss, I was, that's who I was tinkering with at five. And I decided to go Ole Miss, even though I think Marcus Freeman, Notre Dame's always recruited well, but I think he's recruiting a different type of athlete a little bit to Notre Dame that can really compete overall with the Georgias, with the Ohio States. I mean, we know why Brian Kelly left Notre Dame. Yeah, you would get some linemen, that was great, but they didn't have all the assets to be able to go line up against Alabama uh, in, when Alabama was in full tilt and be able to, to beat them or Georgia the way they are right now. I think Marcus Freeman is doing it. But with Lane Kiffin kind of adjusting and understanding how to be malleable and not just be Lincoln Riley, not just you know put the same soft serve out there on defense and think, think you can outscore some people. You look at this Ole Miss team, right? And Ole Miss has money. Like that's, I don't think people realize, Ole Miss got long, long, long money, like old money, money that's been around for a long time. Last year, Ole Miss, and I'm not saying Ole Miss can win it this year, but if you look at the come up Ole Miss defensively, they were top three in the conference in backfield disruption on defense. Right, which is huge. You stop a play before yeah. it starts. And they led the SEC in turnover margin right, defensively, which is huge, which can flip a game. I think Lane Kiffin has embraced, hey, I know we're going to be good on offense, but I can't just be a one-trick pony. We got to find a way to win those games 24 to 21. We got to find a way to win those games 20 to 13 instead of going out there and saying, you know what? We may outscore everybody all year, but it's going to come down to a certain point, especially with a 12-team playoff, where we got to win a rock fight. We see this in college basketball all the time. It's not just the, the best offensive teams that go through the NCAA tournament and just beat everybody 100 to 80. Why was UConn so good? Well, even when UConn didn't shoot well, they were still able to beat you by 15 because they played defense when they had to. They turned you over when they had to. And I think Lane Kiffin is going to take a big step this year in getting to a point where they're an all-around all -around football team that can compete with the big dogs and avoid the landmines. I'll tell you team. another comparison I ran was Penn State and Nebraska, yeah. okay? Because I, that was interesting to me. Like, man, you know, Nebraska's in a better spot than they have been traditionally, and they really own the 90s. You know, I mean, some sure. of the Tommy greatest Frazier, college football. We're not that far removed from Nebraska having some of the greatest college football teams that we've ever seen. Um, and I know, like, yes, that was when we were still young, but in the grand scheme of college football, that still brand sure. means so much. There's just two important categories to me, which is, one, the access to a higher quality recruit. I think Penn State edges Nebraska out in, uh, just in terms of geography, where you can go get some of the 
best high school football players in the country. And then again, the current state of the program. I mean, Penn State has been, you know, like a 10 and two team multiple times that we've seen here in the last five or six years and back to back seasons and kind of get to that cusp of winning a national championship. Whereas I think Nebraska needs to have some really good season yeah. before yeah. they could have a great yeah, season. Yeah, win 10 games. Well, well it, feels exactly. like, it feels like Penn State's been knocking at the door and now Nebraska just pulled into the neighborhood. Well, it is. Uh, like sure. the, the more I think about our list, it, if, we, if we're going by your criteria, which I like, by the way, wouldn't A&M just be a number one on every I had them number one for a second. I, like, I, because money-wise, ain't nobody got longer yeah. money than A&M. I, Recru- I think Oregon does. I mean, Recru- Oregon's got Re- long money. Recruit-wise, I mean, hell, I watched A&M sign 35 stars and then win four games the mm-hmm. next season. I mean, from, from that standpoint, I mean, A and M from a like a money depth standpoint. Yeah, well, yeah. That's why I put geography like, standpoint. The fourth one, the current state of the program. I mean, Texas A and M just fired their head coach Jimbo Fisher, who had number one overall recruiting classes. Whereas I feel like I had Tennessee at the top. Josh Heupel again, I think, is a little bit closer in terms of like who would you who would you if I said either Tennessee or Texas A and M will win the national championship this season coming up? Who would you say is Tennessee. the team? Right? Yeah. They're just a little farther along. Yeah, for sure. And and it's a snap snapshot in time of, of where you are. I don't think you're crazy making any rationale with any of those teams we mentioned, even some of the ones that weren't in the top five, because they do hit a lot of that criteria. But again, it is where you're standing right now, not the trend over the last 40 years, like we talked about. And hey, what's up, YouTube? Do us a favor. If you haven't, subscribe to the show. Like, if you haven't subscribed, we just need you to do that. Helps out everybody. Doesn't hurt anybody. And we love you.